Alright, so this is your intro PowerPoint to genetics. Just kind of a basic outline on Mendel and some of his discoveries and some of just the really basic terms of this unit. So first of all, Gregor Mendel is known as the father of genetics. He was a monk. He spent his adult life basically studying how parent plants pass traits to baby plants. And he's most famous for peas. So why peas? So there were two major reasons he chose to study peas. They have a fast reproduction and large offspring quantities. So he studied within that seven major traits. So he studied seed and pea color, so either yellow or green, flower color, which was either purple or white, seed pod color, which was yellow or green, seed shape and texture, smooth or wrinkled, seed pod shape, inflated or constricted, and stem length, long or short, and stem flower position, axial or terminal. So another concept we're going to come across is true breeding. So this just means, in a nutshell, is breeding for a specific trait. So Mendel, to do his experiments, he needed true bred plants. So he controlled the pollination, or in plant terms, is fertilization. So what's meant by this term? purebred, it just means that after self-fertilization, they will always produce, very important here, the same trait. For example, if you breed a poodle and a poodle, you're always going to get poodle puppies. You're not going to randomly get a beagle puppy. So what if purebreds are mixed? A lot of you probably have mixed breeds at home in terms if you have a dog. Even things like a labradoodle is a mix between a poodle and a lab. There's lots of different mixed breed dogs, even shelter dogs, that are not purebred. So Mendel wanted to study the inheritance of pea plants. So he did this by essentially creating mixed bred peas. So he just mixed his purebreds. And this is a term called cross-pollination. So some other important vocab, and this will help you with your vocabulary as well, some of those terms, things like the pea generation, which is the parent, F1 generation is the offspring of those parents, and F2 generation is the offspring of F1. There's also two key terms here in dominant trait and recessive trait. So dominant trait is the trait that is expressed, and a recessive trait is the trait that is not expressed. So traits and alleles. A trait, I'm sure a lot of you are common, Trait, curly hair, straight hair, black hair, brown hair, blonde hair, blue eyes, green eyes, those are all traits. And those traits are in the genes. So if you remember from the last unit, we talked about genes and we also talked about segments of DNA that code for a protein. So this protein is the trait. So as a result, each characteristic equals one trait. So what are alleles? So Alleles are just alternative forms of a gene. So for example, if your mom has blue eyes and your dad has brown eyes, you could have brown, blue, or you might even have green eyes. So the alternative form of a gene or the allele is something like eye color. So for example, in Mendel's peas, there were two alleles for flower color, purple and white. And important to note, I know it's a little cut off, but alleles are represented by letters in genetic crosses. So for Mendel's crosses, he took purple plants and white plants and he crossed them and he knew they were purebred. So what do you think happened? Well, all of the plants were purple because purple, turns out, was the dominant allele. So in the parents, we have purple, which is represented by big A, big A, crossed with white represented by little a, little a. As a result, all of the offspring are big A, little a. And we'll do Punnett squares in a couple days, don't worry. For the F1 generation, he took one of each from the offspring. So big A, little a, crossed with big A, little a. And what did he get? Three purple and one white. So his conclusions, and I know this is a lot, but these are very important. So he has three major conclusions. One, is the law of dominance. This just means that some alleles are dominant and some are recessive, like the flower colors we just talked about. 
His second one is the law of segregation. This means that two factors control each gene. So they separate. So for example, short and tall alleles are going to separate during meiosis. So in your family, maybe you're tall and your brother or sister's short, vice versa. Maybe your mom's short and your dad's tall. But those are different alleles and they separate into your gametes during meiosis. The third thing is the law of independent assortment, which just means that each characteristic is independent of each other. So, and they're distributed independently as a result. So, for example, plant height and flower color are separate. Just like for you, your height and your hair color are separate from each other. Just because you're tall doesn't mean you're going to have brown hair. Just because you're short doesn't mean you're going to have red hair. So those are two separate alleles. Two other important terms you're going to come across, and you need to get these down. These are make or break in terms of all of the genetics problems you're going to do. You have to know this difference. is genotype versus phenotype. Genotype is the type of allele, and there's three possible kinds. So we have homozygous dominant, if you remember the prefix homo means same, so they're both dominant genes or two capital letters. Heterozygous, which is usually a dominant expression, is one dominant and one recessive, but it's still going to look like the dominant trait. And this is going to have one capital and one lowercase. And remember, the prefix hetero means different. Finally, recessive, which is homozygous recessive, meaning that both are recessive, or little a, little a. Phenotype is what it looks like. A great way to remember this is when you see phenotype, think physical. So the physical appearance. Genotype is the genes. So phenotype is what you see. Genotype is what's in your body that determines what you see. All right, let's do a couple practice ones. So for the genotype, give the phenotype. So remember, genotype is genes. Phenotype is physical. Okay, so black fur in guinea pigs is dominant to white fur. Little b. So big B, big B, well, that's both black fur, so it's going to be black. Big B, little b. Remember, B, capital means it's dominant. So even though it's heterozygous, the dominant letter will be the phenotype that you see. And finally, two little b's is recessive or white fur. And the other one, now we have the phenotype and you have to give the genotype. So the phenotype is toenail color and we can pick any letter. So for the sake of this, let's pick T or little t. So black, well black is, let's say black's dominant. Okay, so we know that black is dominant to clear. So if black is going to be big T, big T, or big T, little t. Clear toenails, on the other hand, are recessive. They're going to be little t, little t.